Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, how to save time, which is uh, very, very important in passing the AMC MCQ exam. So is there a secret of passing the exam? I would say no. The only way you pass the exam is practice, practice, practice. So try to do as many multiple choice questions as possible. Try to do as many mistakes at your place then try to avoid these mistakes in the exam exam is a stressful situation so you are prone to commit mistakes and usually you come out of the exam hall and you think you you will be discussing with your friends you will say ah oh, i know this but i've done mistake that's stress so though you know stuff you do mistakes in the exam because it's a stressful situation and you have to do it under a <clears throat> limited time so um one thing I learned on how to save time is by having a way to read a clinical question. This technique I used and that worked for me very well. Uh, the technique which I'm going to talk now uh, is one thing I used to use for all my clinical exams. This will not work for all the clinic for all the questions but will work for most of the questions and I finished my first half of the exam one hour before everyone finished or one hour before the finishing time and the second half was slightly tough so I finished roughly around 15 to 20 minutes before the closing time. So I think this tip will be very helpful and again kindly do not argue with me with this tip because this is the tip which worked for me. Something might work for you. I thought I'll share this tip because this was very 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 helpful for me to save my time. So what is the step of saving the time? So read the first line of the question. So suppose if the question says 70 year old female has come to you with a sudden onset of shortness of breath. Okay. So and now we'll, what you do is, okay, just remember what, what the person is. Is it female, male and what is the presenting complaint? And now you read the last line of the question. So you read the last line of the question. Most of the times it will say, what is the diagnosis or what is the um, investigation of choice? What is the, um, you know, first treatment you do or something like that. So what I used to do is just with the first line and last line of the question, I used to quickly glance the answers. For example, if the 70 year old female has come with sudden onset of shortness of breath and the last line of the question is suppose uh, uh, what is your diagnosis or what is your most likely diagnosis, something like that. So what I do is I'll quickly glance the answers where usually out of five answers, three will be <clears throat> irrelevant or slightly relevant to the case only two will be relevant suppose if the options are like this um, first option is MI second option is gout third option is malignant melanoma fourth option is uh, pulmonary embolism fifth option is uh, probably uh, COPD exacerbation something like that I'm just giving you as an example this is not a recall this is not read from anywhere this is question i'm just framing now so once you read out the options once you read the first line last line now you know that gout is not the cause of sudden onset of shortness of breath and malignant melanoma is not the cause of sudden onset of shortness of breath so you have ruled out two options and now you are left with three what what are the options mi second one is uh, pulmonary embolism third one is copd Okay, now what you have to do is go back into the question and look for things to rule out these three options. So now um, all these things will come only with practice. Do not, you know, use this tip directly in the exam. And the other thing, as I said, this will not work for all questions. This will work for few questions and that few questions saving time is enough for you to pass the exam. Okay, so now you go back into the question and uh, you you look for things that are there in the options <coughs> sorry so now you look if there is uh, any chest pain uh, looking for the vitals and uh, looking for any cardiac symptoms and uh, 
sorry, if it's pulmonary embolism, usually there will be risk factors given. So you look for that. And the other thing is uh, whether she's a smoker or if there is any wheezing or if there is any dropped oxygen sets or things like that. So now you go into the question, suppose if the question says sudden onset of chest, uh, shortness of breath has come to you, uh, did not have any chest pain initially, now she is complaining of an elephant sitting on the chest. Okay, so sudden onset of shortness of breath, anxiety, elephant sitting on the chest is usually MI unless proved otherwise. Okay, I would not even look at the other options because pulmonary embolism and um, uh, COPD exacerbation will not cause chest pain unless it's uh, there is some anxiety element or panic attack involved but usually elephant sitting on the chest is and ch uh, shortness of breath is usually MI unless proved otherwise or suppose if the question says uh, she was uh, traveling on road from uh, Perth to Queensland uh, she has got sudden onset of shortness of breath pulses this then you suddenly think of pulmonary embolism uh, this is what you have to look in the question and this comes only with practice I would advise without practicing this don't do it in the exam because you will fail the question so practice as many MCQs in Kaplan series as possible and this will work for most of the things <clears throat> or the third one uh, which is if the answer was COPD exacerbation it will be sudden onset of shortness of breath on examination there was diffuse expiratory wheeze the patient is a smoker for 40 years and uh, she's, she has got some you know bluish discoloration of the lips and things like that so which tells us that it's COPD exacerbation I wish that this tip will work for everyone because it worked for me but this comes only with practice you have to do two to three things in a, at a time like uh, you have to glance the question quickly and you have to rule out things and always double check whether uh, the option you have written is right or wrong just once you think at the end this is the option just take the option and check with the entire question like okay suppose this is COPD exacerbation you take the option again to the question and read sudden onset of shortness of breath will COPD cause sudden onset yes then you go to the rest of the things where it says um, expert reviews okay yes COPD fits this then you see sats less than 90 90 percent yes so smoking for 40 years yes so finally once you confirm everything then you tick the answer if you start reading the question in the usual way suppose 70 year old has come to you with a sudden onset of shortness of breath her grandmother had got a malignant melanoma her father-in-law has got a gout and uh, she takes this 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 medications and uh, there is a strong family history of bowel cancer usually they try to confuse you giving all these things so i think this tip works very well sometimes uh, you need not even read the uh, question if you read if you follow this tip for example uh, a patient has come to you with sudden onset of shortness of breath what is the diagnosis on the ecg so you just read the ecg and you just see what the options in the ecg are so many questions will be framed like this where you read the first line of the question last line of the question and uh, you know uh, read the answers so I think this will be very helpful uh, just tell me whether this works for you or not kindly do not argue I know that this will not work for all the questions uh, this is one thing that worked for me and it was very helpful where I finished the exam one hour before so kindly do not argue with me thank you very much bye